Thanks, uh, Ceann Corla. Um, Tánaise, I'd like to ask you for an update on Anglo-Irish relations and how the government proposes to ensure the ongoing and sustained dialogue between the United Kingdom and Ireland in a post-Brexit environment. Thank you. No, I grabbed the Thanks, um, thanks, Deputy. Um, the UK's decision to leave the European Union is one of enormous strategic, economic and political consequence. We respect this decision uh, and we have been consistent in all interactions with the UK Government, making clear that our preferred outcome uh, is a deal on the basis of the withdrawal agreement. We are, of course, open to realistic, legally binding and workable alternatives. But in the absence of such alternatives, the British Prime Minister's proposal to abolish the backstop is unacceptable. Notwithstanding our differing perspectives and continued uncertainty in relation to the manner of the UK's departure, I and my government colleagues are maintaining regular contact with our EU counterparts. The, the Taoiseach met the British Prime Minister last week, and over the last month uh, I've met the Foreign Secretary, the Brexit Minister, the Chancellor of the Duchy of Lancaster, and the Secretary of State for Northern Ireland on a number of occasions, uh, including last night when I hosted him for dinner in Dublin. Uh, it is clear that the UK's decision to leave the EU will fundamentally change the nature and frequency of our bilateral interaction. I'm conscious of the importance uh, of protecting existing cooperation <clears throat> and of providing opportunities for mutually beneficial cooperation and relationship building in the future for obvious reasons. The existing carefully balanced Good Friday Agreement structures for British-Irish cooperation are vital in this regard, namely the British-Irish Intergovernmental Conference, and the British Irish Council. These institutions now need to be utilised to the fullest possible extent. At last November's meeting of the Intergovernmental Conference, a joint paper outlining a possible model to maintain bilateral cooperation post-Brexit was discussed, including regular Taoiseach Prime Minister level summits and ministerial and official level dialogue. The importance of such future structures was also discussed at the latest BWIGC meeting in May and will be revisited by the current UK Government in the coming period uh, and advanced as required in the context of broad developments. Our embassy in London, uh, our largest bilateral embassy and our consulates in Edinburgh and Cardiff remain essential to sustaining ongoing dialogue and the government is, is committed to opening an additional consulate in Britain in the coming years. In, uh, the relationship between Ireland and the UK is and will continue to be unique, vital but also a complex one. Uh, it's a relationship which requires great care, close attention and ongoing engagement at every level. Minute, Brexit and the ongoing political instability in the UK has disrupted Anglo-Irish relations. Our two countries are going in different directions and are at odds over the manner in which the UK will exit the EU. This presents difficulties for both the peace process, the Good Friday Agreement and maintaining the all-island economy, to name but a few. It's imperative, despite the very obvious difficulties, that the British and Irish governments continue to engage constructively with one another. We must lead, the, the governments must lead from the front and set the tone for Anglo-Irish relations. Moreover, the relationship underpins the peace process and there's an, an onus on both governments to ensure that they work collectively and adhere to their obligations under the Good Friday Agreement. Historically, it has been the two governments that have always been the engines and the catalysts for driving the talks and getting things done, and it's imperative that the same impetus continues to be there from both governments. Furthermore, we cannot let Brexit suck all the oxygen from the Anglo-Irish relations. Anglo-Irish relations are much more than just Brexit. Our countries are deeply entwined economically, socially, culturally and will remain so in the post-Brexit environment and Ireland needs to actively nurture this relationship. Tánaiste, what I'd like to ask, um, last November the British-Irish Intergovernmental Conference discussed a joint paper outlining a possible model to maintain and strengthen the high level of bilateral cooperation between Ireland and the UK post-Brexit. Following this, I believe that this commitment was reaffirmed at the British-Irish Intergovernmental Conference held in May of this year and officials on both sides have commenced the process of turning these ideas into a practical plan of work with a view to presenting a fully worked through proposal for a future east-west cooperation. Can you please give the House an update in relation to that? Thank and you. just one minute. Yeah, Deputy, thanks. Um, yeah, no, we, we had a very good uh, engagement on that issue. Both sides recognised that um, the EU post 
Brexit will be very different uh, and we're simply not going to see British ministers as often because uh, they won't be around the, the EU negotiating tables with us. Um, uh, and so uh, even with the Good Friday Agreement structures that are there, uh, I think there was an acceptance on both sides that we needed to go beyond that. Uh, and the idea that we were developing at the time, uh, myself and David Lillington uh, were the key people co-chairing the, uh, the BWIGC, uh, was that we, we were developing this concept which some other EU countries have, France and Spain, for example, sorry, sorry France and Germany, for example, Portugal, Spain, whereby they would have an annual intergovernment uh, conference stroke engagement. Uh, and that we would look to do that every second year in the UK and Ireland, led by Taoiseach and Prime Minister, but also involving at least half a dozen ministers as well in key areas. Um, uh, we're still committed to that approach, uh, but there has been a change, of course, of British government and personalities. Um, I'm hoping that we will have a BWIGC in the next six weeks or so, uh, and that we can get back to, uh, to focusing on that, um, uh, on that new structure uh, in terms of making it happen. Very good.